Hi, Ken at Canis Brakes. Today we're here to look at the 6th Gen Camaro ZL1 uh, brake discs and brake pads uh, to show you guys kind of what's available for that car. Uh, the cars are a couple years old now. There have been lots of guys tracking these things, having lots of fun. We did get quite a few parts kind of made for these, these cars. I want to show you the differences and kind of what you're in for when it comes time to do some replacements. So as you know, of course, there's big Brembo calipers on the front of the ZL1, and those calipers and pads and rotors are pretty unique to that car. And they might be on one of the Cadillac CTSVs, but as far as uh, crossing over to other cars, it's not really there too much. So there's a couple things you may be interested in. Uh, the first thing, of course, is that it's a Brembo six piston caliper. And these calipers Brembo makes, they're made in a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, or sort of a family and in fact in their big brake kits they kind of call it either the P caliper but there's a couple basic things about the caliper and the pad that fits it that stay pretty constant and if you look here you'll see there's a variety of the uh, Brembo six piston caliper brake pads and they all share the same kind of dimensions here with the relationship or the pinholes to the upper contour of the brake pad and uh, the only thing that really changes throughout the range is the radial depth. And you can see from the widest here to the narrowest, there is quite a bit of difference, but this pad would in fact fit in your ZL1. Of course, it would not cover anywhere near enough of the brake disc and probably the pistons wouldn't hit right, but it would in fact fit. These pins and this upper contour are the same, same relationship. So that's just how Brembo does it. You can see they all have the same little divot here and some of these contours along the top are pretty similar. Uh, this is just a sensor notch, by the way, so there's really nothing there. In certain cars, they have pad wear sensors, so of course there needs to be a notch for it. Uh, anyway, so that kind of explains the brake pads a little bit. And we made some diagrams for some of that stuff with a little bit of information. We'll post some pictures of that or show you that later as well. <clears throat> Uh, now let's go on to the discs for the front of the ZL1. Now this is your uh, OEM brake rotor from GM. And you can certainly tell that they knew what they were getting into when they made the ZL1 in terms of the weight and power of the car. Uh, this disc is large and heavy. Uh, I want to say it's about 36 or 37 pounds, including the rotor hat. It has the typical Brembo uh, anti-rattle clips, and these are called like an H-bobbin. They just sort of have an H-shape, and then they use you know, a typical nut and bolt. Uh, so the only thing that we, uh, the problem with that is when it comes time for replacement, GM only sells the fully assembled two-piece rotor, and so therefore, typically we like to think that the rotor hat is reusable to some extent, and so you can't just buy a rotor ring from GM, at least as far as we know, that has not been made available. So there's a couple things we do. And now in the course of the ZL1, we want to make, take advantage of a couple things we think we can do. Uh, we work with Gyrodisc, who's a pretty well-known aftermarket two-piece rotor manufacturer. Uh, they have a rotor ring that they manufacture and their hat so that we can then replace the entire assembly with the Gyrodisc assembly. And the only difference being is that, well, there's a couple differences that matter. The first thing is the disc itself is several pounds lighter than the OEM disc. Uh, we're probably gonna save a good solid four or five pounds per rotor on the front end of the car. And on something like a ZL1, surely that seems like a benefit. Uh, more importantly, I'll move these pads. If you look at the vein design of the two rotors, uh, GM uses, a, or Brembo and GM use a typical pillar vein design. It has a very thick cheek and this series of pillars in there. That achieves a couple of things. I mean, it works perfectly well. Uh, it allows you to make one rotor ring for each side of the car. And then they basically, you know, made the mass and diameter of the rotor according to what they thought was necessary for the vehicle to stop well. And I did have a couple conversations with some fellows from from Michigan and they mentioned GM going through a few iterations of this rotor ring to get enough mass and area in there to help the car brake under track use. It feels like they were learning something from some of their experiments with the earlier model Corvettes, et cetera, and getting these cars to stop well on track. Uh, we certainly feel like the ZL1 brakes are pretty adequate for the car 
and uh, there's not a lot of room to grow to get more out of it. Uh, we do think that the gyro disc rotor makes a pretty good replacement option. Uh, we do a couple, the gyro disc ring has a couple of advantages that we wouldn't necessarily see in the OEM rotor. Uh, the first thing is you can see that the vein density is considerably higher. You can see, I think this is a, you see there are a 72 or an 84 vein uh, disc. It's also what's called a curved vein disc. So we'll, we'll show some images later, but the, the vein is curved. And what this does is makes the rotor ring a better fan. So essentially as the rotor is spinning, you're drawing air in through the inside here and blowing it out the, out the perimeter of the rotor. And of course the air is moving along the vein to take away the braking heat. Uh, so the only issue here is with gyro discs, rotor ring and rotor hat assembly, we have to take out a little bit of this inside of the brake pad in order to clear. So we took this Hawk racing pad and we just simply milled out a little bit and that makes it fit correctly on the disc. And so now we have a correct swept area or radial depth or rotor annulus. They all match together and we think we have a good pad and rotor system for your ZL1. So another couple of interesting things are if we look back at the pad shapes this particular top pad, <clears throat> this in that six piston family, obviously there's not much more to go here. We only have a small radius here. This pad shape is what fits the Chevrolet uh, ceramic brake disc. I think some other, some, other, uh, some other manufacturers as well. But that's the full radial depth brake pad. And we can see how it moved down. This is the this is a ceramic disc like a ZR1 or the uh, fifth gen Z28. This pad is the shape for the uh, Camaro ZL1. This would be what goes on the ZL1 with the Giro disc rotors. And this, in fact, is the SS1LE pad shape, which could, in fact, be used here as well without any major sacrifice in radial depth. And then this is a uh, Brembo six piston P caliper, what they call their narrow annulus pad shape. So it's interesting how Brembo, of course, uh, varies the width to suit the application. And how you could sort of, you know, manufacturers make some or all of these shapes. It sort of varies. There's always some, some give and take in there. But uh, that's the story. These are the ZL1 brakes. And we'd love to set up a package of gyro disc rotors and race pads of your choice. Let us know how we can help you.